here's question 10. And if there's time, then we'll do question 11 also on the gene prediction software uh, question. So let's see, share screen. Okay, so here's question 10. Uh, it's a different sequence. So on question nine, you're looking at the chromosome, human chromosome Y, and then in question 10, it's another sequence that is actually from strawberry. So first thing you need to do is to find that sequence. And uh, Google has become smarter, used to not find that straight, but let's always try the shortest path, you know, the least complicated way to find something. I'm just going to Google that to find that sequence. So I'm copying that. And let's see. Oh, okay, just see what happens when you praise something. Okay, so then you have to remember this, NCBI. And um, then we want a nucleotide sequence. So that, there are some choices here. If I didn't pay attention, didn't see this, I could go over here. And then on the all databases, then you will see nucleotide somewhere. There you go. So this is kind of where you end up no matter where you hit. What you want is to be on the NCBI page and you want to look for nucleotides. So that number that I entered there, can now remove that space because I don't know if it makes a difference. Ta -da! And so uh, this is some mild strawberry. And I said, let's predict the genes in, in this sequence. So we're going to ignore what somebody else already did. See, they already found the genes. But if I'm predicting, from the from scratch okay i need the rest of the information here so let's see i'm going to click on fast a and maybe this is where you got stuck because this accession maybe it's too long for them to post in this one page they needed to know where to click so um i'm going to click on where it's going to show me the dna sequence so if you guys remember the fast a is format for greater than sign, some some description of the sequence, a new line character, and then underneath it is the DNA sequence. So here's that FASTA format. So maybe this is the first hurdle. Okay, I'm going to copy the whole thing. So it's some chunk, as you, you see here in the description. Oh, look at that, there's a bunch of ends. See a bunch of ends here in the middle? That means that either the sequence that was coming from this end and this end, they didn't overlap. And then they just closed them by basically putting this bunch of ends as glue. Or the sequence right here was bad quality and they couldn't call it. But because it's just a stretch of ends, I think this is what they did. So um, when you, and then the, when you see this word scaffold, basically it's like, I have some contigs, I know they go together, but I don't have the whole piece, so that's how they are gluing them. All right, so I have that sequence and I want to predict the genes on that. So if you don't remember the name, predict genes, uh, then let's see, software. And you could go here and you're like, oh, there is a bunch of them. I'm only showing you one. You know, you could take just a course on gene prediction. The one that I'm showing you is this one, the F genes H. Okay, there isn't a, a, a link straight to that, so I'm just going to Google that. The reason why I came to this page is to tell you if you don't remember the name of the program exactly, don't freak out, just Google gene prediction. Then you're going to end up in some list, and that's the one that um, we're gonna use. And okay, many links. Um, okay, the help, help. But here yeah, I'm going to click on the first one, and then end up on this page. So right now we are looking at strawberry DNA. So here we're going to annotate plant genomes. If you click here, you just have to change the database that it's searching for the cues for gene prediction. But we're going to click here. And now you have uh, some choices. I'm just going to use the first one. This one is to show that is, there is 
protein support, but we're going to do that in a future day, not with this, but let's do the F genes H or F Ganesh, whatever, however people say that. Okay, then I paste it here. No, okay. I paste the sequence here. You might have seen that it's not gonna work. Oh no, it, this one will. Okay, good. This one doesn't have little numbers to the side, so I don't have to remove the numbers. Okay, so I'm copying that, pasting it here. And here in organism, see how it starts with mammalia. So those are the animals, even though we, we chose plants. So here, okay, aves, birds. Where are the plants? Dicot plants, phew. Okay, and you don't know this, or maybe you do from the record, but Fragaria is strawberry. So we're going to click on that and then search. All right, so I like going straight to the, the, the diagram one. And the question is asking, how long is the five prime UTR? So the five prime UTR is the, the untranslated region of mRNA. So it's the chunk of the DNA that got transcribed into mRNA, but it's not going to end up in the protein. So it's the chunk between the beginning of the mRNA and the start codon. The start codon is the start of translation. So here, this CDSF is coding sequence first. So that's your first exon. So this part here, we end up in the, the protein for this first gene. This second gene predicted is um, over here. So it's a smaller or shorter first exon. And then the five prime UTR is this, the sequence between the transcription start site and the beginning of that first exon. So this is the five prime UTR for this gene. This is the five prime UTR for this other gene. And then you go here and you're like, Wait a minute, where is that light blue triangle upside down? Like, oh, over here. So it is on, on this side because the, the gene, this gene here that is predicted to start on nucleotide 8934 actually is um, the sequence we gave the computer is the template DNA. And how do I know that? I know that because this is flipped in comparison to that. So it says the transcription start site is here and the signal for poly A tail is over here. So this is saying that the, the DNA sequence I gave is the template. Therefore the mRNA is the reverse complement of that sequence, right? So if you just, complement it, then you have to read it from here to there. That's the reverse as what we were reading from left to right. So how how big is the five prime UTR? The five prime UTR is this big here. So it's between the transcription start site and the first exon. And um, even though it's number it's number 10, it's the first, right? Because that's coding sequence first. And then the blue thing is coding sequence last. And the, all the gray things are the exons in between the first and the last. Okay, so transcription start site, five prime UTR, first exon, first intron between these two, second exon, second intron, third exon, third intron. Okay, you get the, the gist, right? Okay. Um, what, ninth exon, uh, ninth intron, tenth exon, and three prime UTR. So how long is this chunk? Okay, it's between this number and whatever this number is here. And you're like, oh, where do I find that number? Okay, here is the transcription start site. That's where the transcription starts. And then we are going to go from here towards there. 
Um, so this is that exon, how large it is. So it's going to be this minus this because we're approaching from the right. See that? So that minus that. For um, the second or the first genes here, so let's look at the transcription start site here. Then the first coding sequence. So see how the number here is increasing? So that five prime in TR would be between that and that. So it would be this number minus this number. So slightly different way of calculating, but the idea is the same for both of them.